Hi readers, today I'm going to tell you about ways that um, you can help yourselves when you come to tricky parts of a book or start new books and they feel a little bit tricky. So first off, when you notice a text that feels tricky to you and cannot just sit back and do nothing, you need to take action and use some kind of strategies. And rereading doesn't always help that, does it? So we're going to work through our book together to try and figure that out. So mysteries are no different than any other book. You can expect them to have tricky parts, not just the clues themselves. So I want you, when you're reading your book, to put your finger on a challenging part that might be challenging for you or some other person and think about what should I do. So these are some reasons that a mystery can be even trickier. Lots of different suspects and keeping track of the clues. So, so far we have multiple people that could be suspects because we can't trust anybody. We learned that last time. Um, time can shift. It's hard to know what part of the story we're in. You have stories where they go forward and backwards. And this one hasn't really done that yet, but we've had stories that do do that. Um, the setting can shift, and it's tricky to know where you are. So we have had our characters go from school to Noelle's house and then back to school. So that could be tricky if you weren't paying attention and missed just even a line that can throw you off. Well, here are some students that have had tricky parts. Michelle thinks that the tricky parts of a mystery are usually in the beginning. There are so many characters and clues and you don't always know if things are important or not because you don't always know what the mystery is initially. Or you might find out what it is and just start trying to get to know the characters, not even think of them as a suspect. As we learned with our last lesson, I said we even need to suspect Noelle and Todd or Mr. Merlin for that matter the teacher, or Amber Lee, who got the envelope. Then there's Richard. When people are talking, but the author doesn't put the name of the character who said the dialogue. So sometimes we have authors have one person say something, then another person, then the other, then the other, and they're doing the new lines, and then you get so mixed up, like, who was talking now? I've done that where I have to go back and back and back and back. So let's see if that happens at all with our characters and let's think about what we're going to do with that. Okay. So chapter five, Noelle hurried down the sidewalk toward Mr. Merlin's classroom. When she reached the door, she stopped. Please don't let Amberly have solved the mystery. She whispered. She held her breath. Then slowly she went inside. She took, looked over at Amberly and she let out her breath. She knew she could relax now. Amberly did not look happy at all. In fact, she looked really mad. Noelle was sure that meant Amber Lee still didn't know who had sent her the letter. S suddenly, someone touched Noelle's shoulder, and she whirled around. It was Leon. He was holding a glass jar. Spit in the jar, he said. Spit in the jar? What? Yes, yeah, spit in the jar. Why? I need some of your spit. No. All right, that's one of those times we don't know who was talking when. Who's even seen spit in the jar? We do. Let's backtrack. He was holding a jar. So it was Leon. He was holding a glass jar. Spit in the jar, he said. So I think that's Leon. What? Noel cried. Spit in the jar, Leon repeated. Okay, so that's him saying it again. Why? That's Noelle asking. I need some of your spit. That's Leon. No, Noelle said. Okay, so I had to go back to go back and forth, back and forth. So rereading helped me with that. She went into the classroom. Leon followed her. Spit in the jar, Noelle. Well, that can't be Noelle talking since he's saying it to her. So that must be Leon. I have to have some of your spit. Noelle took her seat next to Todd. She ignored Leon. Finally, he walked away and took a seat. What's going on? Noelle whispered to Todd. Why did Leon want me to spit in that jar? 
Amberly is having some of her friends collect spit for her, Todd whispered. She said that's what police do. She saw it on television last night. Noelle wondered if she should be collecting spit too. She decided she just couldn't go around asking people to spit into gla a glass jar. She looked around. Several people in the class were holding glass jars. Noelle could see the jars had something in the bottom of them. Blech. Spit. For a moment, she thought she was going to be sick. Then the bell rang and Mr. Lern Merlin started class. Did anybody solve the mystery, he asked. I've almost solved it, Amberly said. My friends and I are collecting spit from everyone. Mr. Merlin blinked. Would you care to explain that, Amberly? He said. Amberly stood up. It's what police do, she said. I saw it on a television show last night. Well, it is true. Police detectives often, often collect saliva samples from suspects. But you have to be very careful about doing that because of diseases. Ugh, Amberly's friends cried. They all dropped their glass jars. The glass jars fell to the floor. Now there was spit and glass all over the place. Several people screamed. They put their feet up on their desk. Noelle saw Mr. Merlin take a deep breath and let it out, but he didn't get angry. Instead, he sent Leanne to the janitor. While the janitor was mopping up the floor, everyone copied the day's spelling words off the chalkboard. When the janitor finished, Mr. Merlin said, Now then, back to our mystery. What are the rest of you doing? Noelle raised her hand. Yes, Mr. Merlin said. Todd and I licked all the envelopes at our house last night. We watched each other, but we didn't notice anything unusual. Well, you and Todd are on the right track, Noel, Mr. Merlin said. Noel smiled. Amberly frowned. I'll give you another clue, Mr. Merlin said. To solve the mystery, you really do need to start with saliva. But it's the saliva on the flap of Amberly's envelope. Amberly gasped. Let's do an experiment, Mr. Merlin said. Everyone has an envelope at their desk. Hold them up in front of you, Mr. Merlin continued. All the kids in the class held them up. On three, I want everyone to lick the flaps. Ready? One, two, three. Well, I'll lick the flap of her envelope. So did the rest of the class. They made loud slurping noises. Everyone laughed. Now then, class, I'm going to lick the flap of another envelope. Mr. Merlin turned his back to the class. Watch me carefully, he said. He held up another envelope. He licked the flap. He turned his back to face the class. Which side of the flap did I start on? He said, no one said anything. Is it a trick question, I thought? She hadn't paid any attention to that. She closed her eyes. She tried to remember which side of the envelope flap Mr. Merlin had started on. She then tried to remember which side of the envelope flap she had started on. She thought and Mr. Merlin had both started on the same side. It was the left side. Well, opened her eyes. The left, she shouted. Correct, Mr. Merlin said. Now I'm going to give you another clue. I'm right-handed. That's not much of a clue, Noel thought. Mr. Merlin looked at the class. So what question would a good police detective ask next, he said. Well, let's see. Let's see if we can look at those tricky parts that we just talked about and help Michelle. Let's see. We read some more about the clues and sometimes we could use color codes to keep track of the different characters. Sometimes we can just reread. Sometimes we can jot down clues or we can read forward and then go back and reread for clues that you didn't know were clues until you look back. So we didn't know about the envelope part being a symbol, something important. We knew that Noel and Todd were looking at it, but we didn't know that was important. I can jot it down on a post-it. So now we know something about him looking from left to right and that he's right-handed. So what clue might we know? We also know that it has something to do with the saliva on the envelope and we know that it has to do with the envelope. But the left to right and you're right-handed. Hmm. 
a moment I'm going to read forward and we're going to look a little more closely at those clues and, and possible suspects. We also know that Leon was collecting spit for Amber Lee. Why didn't she just collect the spit herself? Why was he doing it for her? Interesting. So when it goes, this person said something, then the next, then the next, we could tag who talked when to help us look at things. We could look for patterns of how people talk to each other. We could reread, which is what we did, and think about how a character usually responds to people. We know that Noelle tends to respond pretty short and clipped to most people, except maybe Todd. And reading it out loud does help because you feel like it's a conversation back and forth instead of doing it in your head. You could give each character a different voice. Let me try that part again that was those characters saying the same thing. Spit in the jar, the answer. What? Spit in the jar. Why? I need some of your spit. No. Okay, do you see how I can give different emphasis to the voices? And you can do that in your head too when you're having one person talk than another. You can kind of tell better who's talking back and forth. And I tend to do that mostly when I'm reading aloud to you, but that time it was really hard not doing it initially. So let's keep going. Here's the oh, there goes Poppy. Just rereading doesn't always help you. You have to give yourself a purpose to reread something. You might reread for clues that you have missed, or you might reread to learn about what a character was doing, or you might reread because the part was confusing about who was talking and figuring out what happens next. So before you reread, think about why and set a purpose. So I'm going to read this next chapter, and let's see if there's a part that's a little confusing that I might need to reread and ask myself why I'm rereading it. Several people raised their hands. Noelle couldn't believe it. She didn't know the answer yet. She held her breath. She put her hand down. I want everybody to think about it for a while. That's what a good police detective would do, Mr. Merlin said. I'll ask you again after we finish reading in our reader. Well, let out her breath. Oh, good. This would get her time to think about what to ask next. Who wants to read first? Noelle ducked her head. She wanted to keep thinking. I do, Amber Lee said. Well, I looked up. Oh, no, she thought. Amber Lee must already know the next question a good police detective would do, or she wouldn't need this time to think like I do. Oh, she'd be thinking about the question instead. Of course, Noelle knew that Amber Lee liked to show off. Well, I'm just going to let her show off just so I can think, Amber Lee said. Well, started thinking. She thought about everything that Mr. Merlin had told them. She thought about envelopes and spit and left to right and right-handed. Oh. Hmm. She thought about how she had done the same thing. She took a deep breath and then let it out. Now what she wondered. She looked over at Todd. Todd was following along the reader. Amber Lee continued to read. Sometimes Noelle was so disappointed in Todd. He should be thinking about the question too. Noelle sighed. Had Todd licked his envelope flap from left to right, she wondered. Suddenly, she had an idea. She poked Todd. He looked up. Show me how you licked your flap, Noelle whispered. Todd rolled his eyes, but he pretended to lick the envelope. He licked the flap. Noelle felt her heart skip a beat. Wait, do it again, she whispered. Now talking, no talking, please, Mr. Merlin said. Noelle turned. Mr. Merlin was staring at her. She pretended to cough, then she pretended to look at her reader. After a few minutes, Amber Lee stopped reading. Leanne began reading. Noelle was glad. Mr. Merlin had to help him with every other word. He was too busy pronouncing words for Leanne to notice that Noelle, what Noelle was doing. Noelle gave Todd another poke. Lick the flap again. She rolled her eyes, but he pretended to lick another envelope. That's it, Noelle whispered. I know what the question is. I don't understand that. I'm going to reread that last part. How would she know the question from that? Hmm. Hold on. I went back to the first time that he licked. Show me how you licked the flap. Todd rolled his eyes, but he held up a pretend envelope. He licked the flap. I felt her hurt. Skip a beat. 
Hmm. Why would her heart skip a beat? Hmm. Do it again, she whispered. No talking, please, Mr. Merlin said. And then we skipped down to this part. Lick, lick the flap again, she whispered. Todd rolled his eyes. He pretended to lick another envelope. That's it, Noel whispered. I know what the question is. How would she know that question? Do you think he licked it different? Hmm. Did he lick it left to right or right to left? We don't really know, but he must have done something different. Or did he do it the same as Mr. Merlin? How did Noelle lick the envelope? She said she licked it like Mr. Merlin did. Huh. Well, I'm pretty sure that's something I need to write down. Is that something that Todd did? First made Noelle's heart skip a beat. So I could write that down. And then I could write down the second time. What did she say? The second time. That's it. Noelle whispered, I know what the question is. She got super excited. So I think I can have the purpose of why the character did this. Why did she sound excited? Why did her heart skip a beat? And I'll be right because it didn't really make sense, but she certainly was excited. That's what you need to do with your books, readers. Remember, when you come to a tricky part of a book or start new books that feel tricky, notice the parts of the text that feel tricky, not just words that you might not be able to sound out, but you need to take action and use strategies to deal with problems. And that means jotting down notes, color coding clues or characters Whatever you need to do to help you figure out this mystery before our detectives, that's what you need to do. Good luck, readers.